In this video, we'll solve an eigenvalue eigenfunction problem. So the problem is find the values of lambda eigenvalues for which the given problem has a non-trivial solution. Also determine the corresponding non-trivial solutions, which are also called the eigenfunctions. The problem is 3y double prime plus 2 lambda y equals 0, x is between 0 and pi, and the boundary conditions are y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of pi equals 0. So when we take a look at the um, equation that we see here, this equation, it's good to actually describe it. Hey, where did you go? To describe it, what, the, what is this equation? Well, this is a second order, um, homogeneous. ordinary differential equation. So this is important. It's an ordinary differential equation. So we are going to use it, solve it using the information that we learned in chapter 4, which was find the characteristic equation. So um, 3r squared plus 2 lambda r, uh, no r anymore, right? Because um, in chapter 4 we had the solutions were of the form uh, e to rx. So if we do the first derivative, we get r e to rx. If we do the second derivative, we get r squared e to rx. So that's why when we replace y double prime, we obtain this r squared. When we replace the r, there is 1, right? Because e to rx is factor out. So what does this mean? If we solve this equation for r, we get that r squared equals um, negative 2 uh, lambda over 3. So r1 and 2 is plus minus square root of negative 2 lambda over 3. And here we're going to have discussions. So case 1 is if r, um, sorry, we discuss about lambda. So if lambda is negative. So if lambda is negative, r1, 2 are going to, this quantity here, if lambda is negative, is going to be positive. So r1, 2 are going to be plus minus square root of negative 2 lambda over 3, and this means two real distinct solutions. Which means that our equation, so what, what was it? y, so y of x is going to be c1 e2 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 x plus c2 e2 negative square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 x. And we have some initial conditions, y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of pi equals 0. So y of 0 equals 0 means actually that c1 plus c2 equals 0 or c2 equals negative c1. We might need this. Now, in order to use the second one, I need to calculate the first derivative. So we get c1 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 e2 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3x minus c2 e and then uh, square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 e to negative square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 x. So y prime of pi is equal to 0 from the initial, for, from the boundary condition. So if we replace, we get c1 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 e to square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 pi Instead of C2, I'm going to put minus C1, so plus um, C1 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 e2 uh, negative square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 pi, and this is equal to 0. So if we factor out C1 from here, or actually if we factor out C1 square root of negative 2 lambda over 3, we are going to get e to square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 pi plus e to negative square root of negative 2 lambda over 3 pi 
this quantity is not going to be zero because we are adding two exponential uh, functions and in order to be zero we obtain c1 equals zero uh, this quantity cannot be zero because that would mean lambda equals zero but our case is lambda less than zero so what does this mean it means c2 it's also right c1 c2 is negative c1 it's also zero so this makes it y of x equals zero which is the trivial solution now let's discuss the second case case two lambda equals zero well when lambda equals zero r1 equals r2 equals zero so y of x equals c1 plus c2x with the initial conditions y of zero equals zero which means um, c1 equals zero and y prime of pi equals zero which means well let's calculate y prime first we get c2 so then it means from these two that c2 is also zero so again a trivial solution now case three is when lambda is positive which means r1 and 2 are plus minus square root of what did we have there uh, negative 2 lambda over 3 but when lambda is positive this quantity is going to be negative so these are going to be plus minus i square root of 2 lambda over 3 which are two complex solutions so when we have complex solution, y of x equals c1 cosine of square root of 2 lambda over 3x plus c2 uh, sine of square root of 2 lambda over 3x. With the initial conditions, y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of uh, pi equals 0. I should say boundary conditions. Um, because for it to be initial condition it would have been y prime of zero equals something so the first the first uh, condition tells us that c1 um, equals zero so y of x now becomes c2 sine of square root of 2 lambda over 3x and um, y prime of x is going to be c2 square root of 2 lambda over 3 uh, cosine of square root of 2 lambda over 3x so y prime of pi the this boundary condition it's giving us c2 square root of 2 lambda over 3 cosine of square root of 2 lambda over 3 pi equals 0. so all the possibilities are c2 equals 0 which is going to produce again trivial solution this one cannot be zero because we already set the condition that lambda is uh, positive. So the only possibility is cosine of square root of 2 lambda over 3 pi is zero. So we know that cosine of pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on, are all these are zero, which means the square root of 2 lambda over 3 pi pi can be pi over 2 3 pi over 2 so 2 n minus 1 pi over 2 for n equals 1 2 3 and so on as n is uh, different values we are generating the values that we enumerated here so what does this mean it means that 2 uh, lambda over 3 is 2 n minus 1 um, over 2 to the second or we can say that lambda is 3 over 2 times 2 n minus 1 over 2 to the second or we can say lambda is 3 times 2 n minus 1 to the second over 8 where n equals 1 2 3 and so on so I'm going to write lambda sub n just to emphasize that for each um, n we get a specific lambda so now uh, let's calculate so these are actually called eigenvalues 
So we find the eigenvalues. Now let's find what is y of x knowing this eigenvalue. So y of x, it's here, right? So y of x is this one. So y of x is c2 sine of square root of 2 over 3 lambda, which is 3 to n minus 1 squared over 8 x. So it's equal to, this can cancel, this cancel with this one, c2 sine of 2n minus 1 over 2x. Well, uh, let's not consider the constants because we want to write only the eigenfunctions. So these are the eigenfunctions. But we can write that the solution is actually sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of c sub n uh, sine of 2n minus 1 over 2x if we were to write uh, all the solutions of our uh, initial um, problem. I hope this helps.